Well, you know what the animation means. Time to talk about the corruption at Albany. Seemingly, it's a, a daily headline. Carl Hasty, as you know, took over as Assembly Speaker right after uh, Shelley Silver got arrested. And many are saying the Democrats rushed him into the chair, including the three of us, and they didn't vet him uh, remotely enough. Now, headlines like this, they're not helping the new speaker. Times doing an exhaustive study of his campaign spending since he took office in 2001. It found the campaign spent more than a million bucks, but there was no explanation as to where about 150 grand of it went. That might be the good news for Hasty because some of the details don't look so good. $30,000 in repairs to his BMW, 550 bucks for one of his girlfriends to design campaign literature, but records show there was no literature that was designed. Another girlfriend got 2,500 bucks for web design. She reportedly paid somebody else to do it and pocketed the rest. And don't forget about the 1700 bucks for karaoke parties that were billed as staff events. By the way, Hasty's office, they've acknowledged that some of the money hasn't been properly accounted for. And moving forward, it says it'll do a much better job. But this whole thing certainly doesn't look good for the speaker. And Dominic, you see how these things tend to play out. Another shoe probably will drop, right? Honestly, if, if I, as I said in the commercial break, and I stand by this, if I were Mr. Hasty, I would not have taken the speaker's job. Here's why. That's Monday morning quarterback. No, well, you what, no, 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 no. But we all know what's in our backgrounds in advance, right? We all know what we've done in but life. But do you think some of these guys think, hey, everybody to plays fast and easy with no, the he, no, accounting he, expenses? But, but, but here's the problem. You've got Elliot Ness standing by looking in. And... I am telling you, based on, well, first of all, my first rule of thumb with journalism, my instincts, the quiet ones are the ones that I always watch the most. And there was no one more quiet than Mr. Hasty. And I am telling you, Richard, that New York Times article alone, Preet Bharara can indict but the I, new speaker of the assembly. I better speak up before Dominic accuses me of wrongdoing. If we, <laughs> if we can throw the list of, of what he's been accused of, of doing back up on the screen, because the $30,000 in car payments over 10 years, by the way, that's actually legal. I mean, yes. you're entitled as part of your campaign to, to fix up your car, also being no, an office. No, no, if you're no, using, no, no, it's if not. If you're using it for no, campaign no, and for no, work no, purposes, no, 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 it no, no, is. No, 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 Here's where he's not legal. The campaign funds are legal. But if you double build with your expense account for the bill? mileage, I believe he did. And so that's one of the, so it's double billing. Let me, we'll hold off on that until okay. we get confirmation okay. of that. The money to the girlfriends for the web design and the design work, that's legal. I no, mean, it, no, yes, no, yes, no, it, it's yes, not. It, you are allowed, no, it's not. You're allowed to hire one a contractor if they did it to somebody but else. But they had to do it. If but, they but I hate to say this. it out to somebody but else, but you're hate, allowed to do but that. But I hate to say this, Andrew. Here's why it's a problem with the U.S. attorney. One of the women he paid for this is his baby mama. I understand that. But it, it's again, it's perfectly to legal. To pay your baby it's mama? It's perfectly legal to pass through a contractor to somebody else to have the work done. And she didn't do the work. Let's hold our judgment for the details on all of this. Now, the money for the karaoke club that was billed as food, that's a problem. Right, because it was a nightclub, they didn't serve any food, it was listed <laughs> and, as food. And how about the 150000 so, Let's push that aside. I that? don't know where that $150,000 went. Well, and let me ask you, when, we you know, read it, when you read it, when the same piece that we both read, did you think that they were, you know, there's probably something fishy going on, but they were reaching for some of this stuff. I thought there was a smell to it, uh, to the to the whole thing in its totality, and there were a few items that were problematic, the karaoke, for example, but that for the most part, it was just little bitty paper cuts all the way through. Uh, you know, you were of the impression that you thought this was a setup piece for something else down the road, uh, and it may very well be. We'll, we'll see where it goes, but, you know, it's... I hate, maybe I've been spending too much time with Brodsky, but <laughs> let's, find, let's find out what the al actual allegations are and the specific And you believe he's in real trouble? I think he's in real trouble because okay. Elliot Nest is looking on. And that would be Mr. Bahara to you. All right, <laughs> did you hear this one? After the U.S. lost thousands of soldiers in Iraq, destroyed, um, obviously, oh, what was left, and, and caused civil war that basically still rages on. I'm not saying it was great under Saddam, but the pretense is why we went in a little different, right? You could certainly argue the region got even further destabilized after we went into this. Nobody's saying Iraq has been some giant success, let alone even a moderate one. Well, one of the architects of that war is now saying his boss, then President Bush, had it wrong. I'm talking about former Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. Here is what he had to say, and I'm going to quote this directly. The idea that we could fashion a democracy in Iraq seemed to me unrealistic. I was concerned about it when I first heard those very words. Now, 
whether you love or hate Dick Cheney, and I'm in the latter, you have to admit at least this guy's been consistent. Cheney pushed for the war, he supported it even when it was turned into a hot mess, and he supports it now just when just about everybody admits it was an unmitigated disaster. Andrew, I give you the honors. When you hear Rummy say what he did, what was your reaction? I hate these guys who say, boy, when I was in the administration, we did this thing, and I didn't agree with it, and it was a real mistake, but I was just... So do something about it while you're in the power or position to do something about it. The, the strongest thing he could have done is resigned and said, here's why I can't support this anymore. But, and he did resign but, later when well, things were going really south, yeah, after, but not because of the policy. he carried a lot of water for a long time and also took a lot of the blame himself for the way. And he was so arrogant with the press conference conferences about how Iraq was going and how you know, the known knowns and the known unknowns and they shut up <laughs> resign and explain your position and when we have a position where we could do something about I it as opposed to all more. these years later the phony the phony phony <laughs> I mean I never thought I'd say I'll take Dick Cheney over that but at least he stood by what became his legacy and had the audacity to then blame the sitting president for the mess they laid on his lap here that he wasn't tough enough like Rambo and Rambo Jr. and Wolfowitz here with a brain trust. But when I heard that one, I was like, you know what? Even for Rumsfeld, this one's rich. Well, Richard, I, I tell you what. The last time I checked, the only one that spoke up and stood up was Colin Powell. And yep. he, was, he was ridiculed within the administration. But how about this, Richard? How about this? Um... I let my boys make billions on a business deal, and then I come forward publicly mm. and say, I disagree with that. Mm. I, I didn't think it was going to work to begin with. That's, that's about what we just saw is why people hate politicians. Billions were made, still being made, and now you're speaking out years to, later. To be fair, I think some of the generals under Bush also, they resigned, and then they were complaining about the problems that we'd encountered. You oh, you'll notice that, yeah, 350,000 yeah. troops, and he got a pink slip. Right, right. And it was after there was a, a spate of generals after they resigned were very critical of the Bush administration and the Pentagon. Uh, but again, it's like do something while you're in the position to do about it. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of this in the Obama administration. We have not seen a lot of people who have left the administration and then turned around and complained about some Gates of the, the performance. Yes, Gates, and of course he was inherited from yep. the Bush administration. So I, that's a refreshing no, change. You're right. Uh, guys, thank you so much. And when we come back, police say they have some breaks, and they are looking, of course, for those two convicted killers who broke out of an upstate New York prison. We come back, we have the very latest.